What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about front headlock position or chest to back connection in front of your opponent's elbows. I wanna give you guys a general overview of the way that I like to look at front headlock position. Um, and the way that I like to break down is three directions of attack, okay? And in reality, it's two directions, but one of them is broken down into two subsections. So you have your submission threat, which is gonna be your strangles from the front, mostly variations of guillotines and katagatames, darces, anacondas. And then you're gonna have your short offense, which is gonna be your positional game. And the way that um, I like to separate short offense is into go behinds where you're looking to go from in front of your opponent's elbows to behind their elbows and then go start going into uh, back attacks or you can look at leg attacks where you're looking to put your opponent down to a hip and then use that to either get on top of your opponent or use the threat of getting on top of them to create back exposure and then ultimately get behind them so um, when i'm in a front headlock position right using turtle obviously we have one of the most important connections that we can make to our opponent in the sport. That's chest to back. And I like to break it down into being in front of your opponent's elbows and then being behind their elbows, okay? More turtle-like scenarios. From this more front headlock position, the first direction that we talked about is strangles from the front, where I'm in front of my opponent's elbows, and then from here we have a bunch of different variations of guillotines, okay, of katagatames that we can go into. Generally speaking, it's never just one of these that you're going to use, okay? You're always going to use whichever direction you choose based around your opponent's posture and uh, just the way that they respond to this position. And so you're going to make your choice based around your opponent, okay? When it comes down to finishing somebody, okay, from in front of the elbows, whether it's with darces or guillotines, you want to look at a couple of different things. One, if your opponent is in very tight, with his hands and with his elbows, and he's tucking in very tight. He has his hands, okay, in defensive positions where he's not allowing me to get in and get a good purchase on his neck. It's gonna be difficult for me to go in and finish him here with any sort of guillotine or, or front strangle. But because he's so preoccupied with what's happening at his neck, he's gonna be less preoccupied about me getting around him and getting a positional advantage, okay? Because he's so focused on the submission threat, okay? He's not focused on the positional threat. And so when somebody's tight and in positions like this, it can be difficult for me to go in and create that threat of a, of a strangle, but it's a little easier for me to start going in, or it's a lot easier for me to start going in and hitting go-behinds, okay, where I can go in and I can get behind my opponent's elbows. Because in order for my opponent to defend his neck, he has to keep a narrow and tight posture here with his elbows and knees, okay? In order to prevent me from going in and penetrating at the neck, he has to be narrow with the elbows, he has to put weight on his elbows, close out the space around the neck, which in turn makes it a lot easier for me to start going in and just threatening getting behind my opponent, okay? So that's one way that we can go in and look at it. On the contrary, in order for my opponent to stop me from getting behind him, okay, he is gonna have to be a lot more mobile, okay? And so he can't think about the submission threat and think about me going behind him. So if he's worried about me going in and behind him, oftentimes your opponent will start putting hands on the floor, okay? And as he starts building up to the elbows here, now when I go to circle behind him, he's more mobile. When I go to get behind him, maybe he grabs my leg, okay? Maybe he just circles the hips away from me. As I go to get behind him, he circles the hips away from me, and it's difficult for me to go in and start creating a threat of getting behind him. But it's a lot easier for me to start wrapping up my opponent's neck and then going into variations of strangles from the front. When your opponent's weight is on their hands, they can't go in and start hand fighting me here. In order for him to hand fight me, he has to put his elbows on the floor, and now his hands can come off the floor and get a hold of my hands. And now from here, he can start defending my hands. If the elbows are on the floor, he can fight my hands. If the elbows are off the floor, he can't fight my hands, but he can stop me getting behind him. Obviously, there are ways that you can still get behind him, but generally speaking, he's gonna have an easier time at stopping me from getting behind him, but a harder time at stopping from me from getting a strangle. So we look at those two directions where I can create a threat of the strangle, and as he goes in and defends the strangle, he presents me with a posture that to where it makes more sense for me to go in and get behind him. If he prevents me with a posture that prevents me from getting behind him, it makes more sense under these circumstances to go in and start sliding into strangles from that position because my opponent isn't in a posture at that very second to go in and defend, okay? And the third one we'll look at, from these four-point situations, your opponent, uh, he makes it difficult for you to uh, go in and start uh, getting behind him, because as I go in, I circle behind him, he has a better ability to start circling away from me, 
And sometimes it can even be hard to get strangles from these positions. Obviously, I can still do both of these, okay? If you're able to get a hold of your opponent's lower body, you can often get behind them. If you're able to get a good grip on the neck, you can often get behind them. But in situations like this, oftentimes your opponent is looking to start standing up. When he goes in and he starts looking to stand up, you can see that the feet and the hands start coming closer together. And as the head starts to rise, he's going to give me opportunities to go in and start getting a hold of his legs. And now I can use the leg tackles, start putting my opponent down to his hip. And if I can threaten the top position, oftentimes your opponent will start uh, turtling. And then he'll start giving up some degree of back exposure. And if I can get him to a turtle, I can take his back. If he decides to concede to bottom position, I won the battle, okay, for top position. And so there's a tons of variations of, of all of these. I like to think about it in these three directions when we're talking about front headlock position, where I have my chest on my opponent's back and we're in front of the elbows. Ultimately, if I'm, what I'm looking to do is get behind my opponent or submit my opponent from in front of his elbows, okay? Sometimes he'll deny me both of those and he'll lead me into opportunities to get to his legs, okay? He'll give, give me opportunities to get to his, uh, to put him down to a hip and create that positional threat, okay? Now, what's most important about this is not um, any one of these three directions, but it's about utilizing them in combination. Whereas he denies me one, he opens up an opportunity for me to go to the other. We saw that um, just a second ago with the go behind. Oftentimes, your opponent will deny you the ability to strangle him by keeping everything in nice and tight. However, he gives you a better opening to go behind him and vice versa. Okay, that's also true when I uh, put my opponent down to the hip. If, I, if I'm able to create a situation where my opponent maybe goes in and starts standing up on me. Okay, from here, maybe he stands up and we both come up to our feet. I'm in a situation now where from here, you know, he has now an ability to fight my hands. Okay, because he doesn't need his hands as a base of support. He now has an ability to move away. So if I try to go and I get behind him, it oftentimes it's difficult. He circles the hips away. Good. And circle with me. Good. And I can't get behind him. Okay. So when I'm in a situation like this, I might be more inclined to put my opponent down to a hip. And if I can successfully go in and I can put my opponent down to a hip, now from here I'm in situations that as he goes to defend, I can start locking up submission holds. As we both go to get up, I can start creating opportunities to go in and get to my opponent's back. Okay, so it's going to be about utilizing all three of these directions in combination based around what your opponent presents to you. Okay, so. When you're looking at front headlock, I like to think about it in two directions, and in reality, it's three directions. Strangles and short offense. When you think about short offense, think about getting behind your opponent's elbows to turtle positions through variations of go behind, and think about putting them down to a hip using various methods of either leg grabs, okay, or foot sweeps to be able to put your opponent down to a hip and create the threat of either a positional advantage where you can get on top of your opponent or as they go in and they start defending the positional advantage, oftentimes that will lead to back exposure. Oftentimes it'll lead to an overextension that will get you into some sort of submission. So I hope that helps you guys. Thanks so much.